Welcome back to the Infamous Goats Podcast. I'm Sellis. I'm Josiah. And today we got another episode review for y'all. Go ahead, tell them what we watching, man. And today we'll be reviewing episode two, Secret Evasion, Promises. All right, so for the plot of this, Rhodey is charged with telling Fury that he's out of American intelligence, but even with Fury is out, he's in. Meanwhile, Gravik is put in command of the scroll forces of Earth and become the new general. His first step is to put an end to Earth intelligence, but is unaware that there's a traitor in the ranks. But this episode got off to a, a really, slow? like, no, no, not slow, but really, like, touching or more like fulfilling start. You see at the very beginning, you see Nick Fury. It's a flashback. Nick Fury. Yeah, it's a 1997, I think. Yeah. He essentially giving promises to the scrolls, you know, because we learn the scrolls backstory, how their home was invaded and they mm-hmm. had to flee. Then Nick Fury like, yo, come home to me. If y'all help me, I can help y'all. And he literally made a promise. And that's where we got introduced to young Gravik and a young Gaia. Yeah, you see that graphic is he was hurt because he lost his parents and like basically uh the, the lady was saying like we could use him Nick uh he's young he he can think he could think on his feet he's he's crafty like they say he flew in a ship by himself or something like that yeah like and he was like he's a kid and she was like that's only if you humanize him so they wouldn't they wasn't looking at even the kids they weren't looking at him as kids they was looking at them as like weapons basically. So right there, you kind of saw his potential and what, what he's capable of. And in, in this episode, you really see when he go to the meeting, like he, he really about business. Wait, before, before we get to that, man, because I, it, it, was, uh, it was a few things I wanted to talk about before that, that happened. You see that uh, Nick Fury is blamed for what happened in Moscow. And the U.S. is, the US is also taking the fall for it because he worked for them, so... By default, they assume that the U.S. has something to do with that. And you see Rhodey, like, he was dealing with all the pressure from the shit. Like, he he had to deal with the fallout. Like, you saw he was telling Nick, oh, I got to st- deal with the steamy power of caca you left. Bro, just say shit. Like, just say shit. I really, I, I like that scene because you saw while Rhodey was in the courtroom, he was defending Nick the whole time. Mm-hmm. Like, he really didn't throw Nick under the bus. He didn't chastise him till he met him in person. That's that's one thing I like about Rhodey's character. Yeah, you're right, man. You definitely right, man. But yeah, that like just the whole way that they man, the scrolls, they they planned that shit perfectly because they knew exactly what to do, how the shit was gonna play out, and they they knew that all the fall was gonna go on Nick. But man, you see him and Taylor I wanna talk about him and Talos on that train, man, because you see Talos tell him that. It's over a million scrolls on Earth when Nick Fury just thought it was a few that they let in. But while he was gone, um, over a million scro- scrolls came into Earth. And you see Nick Fury get kind of like upset about that. Because he basically said, you can't bring another sp- species on this planet where there's barely enough room for a human species. And they won't, they won't collide well. And he basically told Nick Fury... You you ran away. You didn't hold up your end of the deal. So it's like, where else were we supposed to go? What else are we supposed to do? Yeah, because he, he was talking about how he disappeared in a blip for five years. And then when he came back, he peaced out to space. And honestly, I kind of felt remorse for the scrolls like right there. Because now I I heard their side of the story. Mm-hmm. Even like in the beginning monologue, even to that train scene, Nick Fury was held to a high standards and expectation where he really didn't meet, kind of. So, like, I mean, but, I'm not going. Yeah, st- but still, he was holding holding strong to his morals. He was like, like I don't still don't think y'all belong here, and and but the host the host makes the rules. He was like saying something like, I. Uh, like I'll let y'all in so I get to decide what's what I want to use y'all for or something. That's because he was talking about Taylor was talking about how he used them to be the spies and stuff. And once they didn't want to do that anymore, they were no good. All right. So next, like later on in the episode, we see Gravik meet with the uh council and like a little private meeting or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they basically talk about well, Gravik come in, like say he came in on business. He basically said, I, I want to be the commander of the scrolls now i want to be the leader to um build us a new nation yeah he wanted to start a war yeah everybody was in favor except one person 
Sonia Fa- Sonia character. Her, Sonia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, Sonia. Yeah. She was definitely against it the whole time. He he was just eyeballing her like like man, like get in line, like or I'm gonna make you get in line. And he was like basically like, he put a, he bung, he banged his hand. He was like I want a war. Like there's a war coming. And she she basically well she really said like did y'all forget where we come from like this is not what we're about and I don't mm-hmm. stand behind y'all and he, he said you know like I ain't gonna kill you or nothing but same time shit you with or you against us yeah that basically you're right man graphic was on business I, I that actor is so good I forgot his name all right now we get to my favorite scene in the whole episode man when Rhodes and Fury have that meeting, man. That was an acting masterclass put on by Don Cheadle and Samuel L. Jackson, some of the best acting I've seen in Marvel. Two of the greats. Go ahead, touch on that thing. Man, you just see Rhodes coming on business. He he basically came there to discharge Fury. He he like he was voicing all his fr- frustra- frustrations. He's like, it's your fault Mariah got killed. It's your fault all of this is happening. He's like, I, I'm looking at a man that I respected all these years that I've been through all these personal trials and tribulations with, and he, you going outside, like, w- what's going on with you? And we also found out that Rhodes knew about the scrolls the whole time because he found out about them 15 years ago. And what mission never, he was on? Uh, he was on a private look. Like, they, he said he got, like, a private look at a, 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 a alien that could transform into a human, a scroll. And Nick was shocked to, shocked to hit up. But when I got from that, I feel like Rose don't know the full capabilities or the, all the information about scrolls like Nick Fury do. Mm-hmm. So and but, Nick is trying to tell him a war is coming. He's trying to tell mm-hmm. him. like, Yeah, he said Moscow was only the beginning. But what Rose is coming from is like, you can't do this on your own. You literally have a team, an army. But Nick Fury is like, I caused this, so I got to fix it. Mm-hmm. I think he feels some type of guilt or he, he hold himself accountable. That, yeah, that's what I got. Yeah. Like you said, the false hopes he gave them, that's why they all turn it. Because they, they tired of it. They they realize that he's no help. But man, like Don Shooter gave my favorite line in that whole scene. He was like, you deserve all this smoke that's coming your way. I'm like, oh shit, stand on your shit, Brody, man. I'm like, go crazy. Man, it was the way the way he delivered that line, bro. And then Nick, he came right back on his ass. He's like, I got another one liner for you too. He was like, even when I'm out, I'm in. That scene was raw yeah. as hell, bro. He's talking his talk. Definitely, right. man. They had two of the greats. I think that was like one of the first scenes together. Ever. Was it? And my I'm pretty sure yeah. that was the first scene ever they had this t- like together on on camera. Mm-hmm. You're right, because I only think about it. Nick Fury only been with the characters of Captain Marvel and the original Avengers on top of my head. So so that was like, man, for them to how they first beat to be that, that was raw as hell. That was definitely raw as hell. Yeah, man. I, I, let's talk about the dude getting his finger cut off in that meat, in that meat locker, bro. Pretty graphic for Marvel. Yeah, really, really graphic. So basically, the guy was one of the soldiers for Gravic, and they got they captured him. You saw they got him in his butcher shop. They tortured him. Then this lady walk in. And she, yo, I, I get the information out myself. She pull out this needle, this strange needle. Mm, she so, said to yo, make your blood boil like 160 degrees or something. Yep. Because first, before that, she chopped off his finger. Oh, yeah, you a scroll. I like how they did that. Because when she chopped off his finger, it turned green. I'm like, oh, damn, that's tough. Mm-hmm. And All right. She was like, yeah, this, I, that, I got confirmation on that. Yeah, with Gaia, we found out that she know that the Rebels are experimenting with, for, with foreign DNA. And she pretty much found out it's like a lot of shady shit going on with Gravik because Gravik is trying to build this machine to strengthen the scrolls to make them super powered. And you see, you, she feels some type of way about that. She feel like he abusing his authority, honestly. and He kind of taking things to the next level. And... And you see, she go do some research. She like go behind his back on the computer. And she she almost got caught too. So yeah. And she knows that he hiding something, but he don't know that she know he hiding something. 
But he a smart man, so I got a feeling that she knows. I, th- it, I think it's more, per- it's more it's more personal for Gravik. I think we're going to learn throughout the rest of the series that Gravik and Nick Fury had a closer relationship than we think. Because you can see that little, like, the little head touch they did in the beginning. You can see that that was the start of their relationship. And I think Nick took Gravik under his wing and trained him to be a soldier. And then at some point, that relationship got broken. And that pretty much this is why he feels so strongly about starting a war between the humans. Because of his hate for Nick. Yeah, that was deep, yeah. But I want to touch on, you saw when Guy was on a computer, and on top of the screen, it said Groot. Did, like, did you notice that? Groot? Yeah. No, I didn't notice that. I, I, I could be wrong, but I'm positive, almost positive, it said Groot. So I'm thinking, it's like, all right, what if they get, like, some tree-like powers or something, like... I don't know. I think uh, I'm gonna have to go back and watch it, or maybe it was a different word that you probably saw the group part in it, and it was just covered up with something on frame. Uh, could be. Hey, you never know though. You never know with Marvel, man. I swear to God, they just be throwing shit at us at this point. Holy shit! Not, not, a lot of shit don't make sense. They, they people eat it up because they Marvel. They make they make it make sense. Tell DC I mean, to take I mean, you. I mean, Marvel give you about two to three good stories a year. All that other shit, man. bro. You you can't even bat, bro. Secret Invasion and Guardians of the Galaxy was the only good things to come from Marvel this year. And that's it. Besides, um, Ant Man. You got Moon Knight. You got uh, what else that came out this year? Some other, it was like I feel like it was one more show. And then you got Miss Mar Miss Marvel. That's I already know that shit gonna be horrible. Well, I don't know if if they. I feel like they taking a different tone with that one, so we gonna see. All right, but yeah, man, let's get let's get to the craziest part of the episode, bro. This is when Nick Fury returns home to his wife Priscilla. Mm-hmm. But in this in this scene, we also learn she is a scroll, and that got me scratching my head. Do he know that she a scroll? Or uh, he know because I mean yeah he know I think she he met her back in the day when the scrolls came to Earth and like, I think we gonna learn more about that the next episode but I'm pretty sure yeah he know he know for sure okay so that, that's uh, why man, he you... that's why he always kept that hidden and that's why he probably got this personal feel for the scrolls um, yeah, but you realize he didn't, he didn't wear his red ring in public he didn't want people to know that's why she was like um she was like you missing something. Yeah, he put that on. Mm-hmm. Damn, I never pieced that together for because I was wondering like why you ain't got your ring on. It's weird, yeah, but you, you want people to know she was a scroll. Yeah, what what did you think of that scene? Shocking, shocking, very shocking. I feel like that's that something I didn't expect. Now we see why he this story is so close to Nick Fury because his whole life is about scrolls. Damn near. <laughs> but, <laughs> shit. Hey man, man, I'm excited. Episode three, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Man, for real. So, well, what you expecting from episode three? Uh, we, we, I'm expecting to learn more about Nick Fury and Priscilla, how they met. I'm expecting to know more about Gravik. Why, why does he hate humans so much? What happened from his childhood for him, for him to hate humans? What happened mm-hmm. from his upbringing in general for him to hate humans? What happened with Gaia? What made her switch teams? Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm just curious to see what else Gaia go find out and how Gravit go take it when she finds out. Yeah, like you know. Yeah, but because she's because she's still kind of playing both sides, ain't she? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you see, she kind of being like discreet about everything, like keep everything yeah. low key. Yeah, like, Taylor's kind of playing both sides too. Man, he is. You see, he kind of getting fed up with Nick too. Like, yeah, that's what I said. I, hey, you know, it's only episode two, man. I think this is definitely a, a spy thriller. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for us today, y'all. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook and YouTube at Infamous Ghost Podcast. And you can follow us on Instagram at Infamous Ghost Pod. And you can follow us on Twitter and TikTok at Infamous Ghost. Until then, we see y'all next episode. Peace.